Chapter 7 is a exploration in square roots. We're going to talk about these things called cube roots. And we're going to do this formula that you've probably heard of before. It's pretty cool, called the Pythagorean Theorem. Now, you are going to at some point want calculators. So if you're one of those people who lost your calculator, you're going to need to get one. You are not going to be able to do some of these without a calculator. Or if you can, it will just be very painful. So for now, we're just going to keep it simple and learn a couple of things, and then we'll get more advanced later. So my question for you first is, do you know what number, when you multiply it by itself, you get 25? If you said 5, you are wrong because the answer is 5 and negative 5, right? Don't forget, negative times a negative is a positive. This number, or numbers, is called a square root because when you multiply it by itself, you get the original number. So 5 is the square root of 25, and negative 5 is also the square root of 25. Every positive number has a positive and a negative square root. Um, zero has only one square root, which is zero, because there's no such thing as negative zero. And a perfect square is a number with integers as its square root. Almost every number has a square root. It's just a question of how complex does it look, like how many decimal places does it have? And when your square root is a whole number or an integer, then you are called a perfect square. So checking out example one, they just want us to say what the square roots of 49 are. So that would be seven and negative seven. This check mark looking symbol, it's called a square root, but it also has a other catchy name that you'll hear people call it which is called a radical sign. And now my joke on the right-hand side makes a little bit more sense. And it's used to represent just the positive version. When you go down here and you put a negative sign in front of it, of the symbol, then you're talking about the negative answer. So if 25 had the symbol, then I would have only said one of them. Just some vocabulary while we're talking about it. The number under the radical sign is called the radicand. And let's find some square roots. So what's the square root of 36? What number times itself is 36? Well, that is 6, but it's also negative 6. In Number two, they're telling us they just want the negative answer. So we're just going to write negative 8. They don't want positive 8, just negative. In number three, we can actually do it in two pieces. We can just pretend they're two separate questions and then turn it into a fraction as our answer. So the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 25 is 5. So I just turn that into a fraction. And they asked me for the positive answer, so I'm going to give the positive answer. If you want to get your calculator, feel free to do so and try playing around with the square root symbol. The answer to number 4 is 0 0.9 because 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 equals 0 0.81. If you don't believe me, try it on your calculator. And in number 5, um, forget about that symbol for right now, the square root of 12.25 is 3.5. That symbol, if you look closely, it's a plus sign on the top and a minus sign on the bottom. So they're actually telling us that they want both answers, both the positive and the negative. Now you can write it like this, and this is probably how you'll end up writing it in high school, but you can also write it separately if you want. It's okay, 3.5 and negative 3.5, you can write them separately if you'd like. If you're not sure how to use your square root symbol, make sure you have your calculator in class and I will show you, or you can have a table mate show you, um, but I do want to make sure that everyone knows how to use that square root symbol on the calculator. And again, this chapter is going to be very, very painful for you if you are not bringing a calculator. When we go to evaluate square roots, we want to use PEMDAS. 
So I'm going to write it on here. And now that we're incorporating square roots or radical signs, you have to know what order they belong in. So we're going to turn PEMDAS into PERMDAS because radicals go with exponents. So they go in that order. So parentheses, exponents, radicals, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So now let's evaluate now that we know the order. So in number one, the first thing that comes is the square root of 36, the radical, which is 6. And when you have a symbol next to a letter, next to a number, then it's multiplication. So this ends up being 5 times 6 plus 7. 5 times 6 is 30, and 30 plus 7 is 37. In number 2, there's no parentheses, there's no exponents, but there are radicals. Now, you can split this up, but it's like we did in the other question where you do the square root of 18 and then the square root of 2, but there is no friendly square root of 18 and there is no friendly square root of 2. So what you want to do is do the math. What is 18 divided by 2? Hmm? Well, it's 9, so I'm going to write 1 fourth plus the square root of 9. And then I can, well, duh, the square root of 9 is 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. So this becomes 1 fourth plus 3, which is 3 and 1 fourth. If you want to write 3.25, that's okay. Whenever you have multiple operations like this in number 3, you always start in the inside, just like if you have parentheses inside of parentheses, if you've ever seen a question like that, you start inside and you work your way outside. So the first thing I'm going to do is a square root of 81, and the square root of 81 is 9. Now I do exponents, and 9 squared is 81. So this actually brings me to a fact that I want to point out is that, you know how we say addition and subtraction are inverses, and we say multiplication and division are expo uh, inverses? Exponents and radicals are also inverses. So if you have the square root and you're squaring, then they cancel each other out, just like in this example, right? You had 81, and you ended up back at 81. So that's just for your own information, so that way maybe you can catch some tricks as we go through these. Squaring is the inverse of square rooting. Last one with me. The area of a crop circle is 45,216 square feet. What is the radius of the crop circle? So they didn't tell us anything. Oh, and we have to use 3.14 for pi. So they've given us the phrase radius, they gave us the phrase circle, and they talk about the area. So do you remember the formula for area of a circle? If you don't, I'd like you to at some point start memorizing it. It's A equals pi r squared. When I was in school, we used to use these two phrases. We used to say cherry pie is delicious, and apple pie are too, or apple pies are too. And that was how we were taught, because back in the day, we used to have to memorize our formulas. Um, that was how we remembered the difference between circumference and area. So cherry pies are delicious, and apple pies are too, if that helps you. Well, all right, so now let's get back to the question. Plug in what you know. The area is 45 to 16. And they told us to use 3.14 for pi. We have to find the radius, so we're going to leave that as our um, variable. When you drop a line to solve, divide both sides by 3.14, and you're going to need your calculator. What is it? I got... 14,400. So now think about what I just told you. What's the inverse of squaring? Because I want to get the r completely by itself. 
A lot of kids will think it's by itself right now, but it's not because it has this exponent. So what's the inverse of squaring? And if you're not sure, look up here. The inverse of squaring is square rooting. They n make each other cancel out. So I will take the square root of both sides, just like I would divide both sides or add to both sides. In this case, I'm going to square root both sides. And when you square root 14,400, you get that R equals 120. And since we need a label, it's going to be regular feet. It's not square feet because square labels are only for area. And they're not asking for the area, they're asking for the radius. So if you have any questions, write them down somewhere on your note sheet and ask them when you see me in class. And bring your calculator.